Um, and we'll go downstairs and hopefully the internet will keep flowing. So we are going to move downstairs and I hope that the internet. And we have Jason's work here. Oh, it's really hard to pick the detail up here. Um, So, um, Terry, have you got that? No. Oh, it's still sending there. Uh, um, so, we've got a bit of text that um, Jason has provided. So, you can come in. You can come in. Um, Uh, so, um, Jason's in Japan and he's working right now, but he sent some text which Terry's trying to post into the Skype chat. Yeah. I've seen some of his work he's doing, but he, when he started off, it was really interesting doing quite horror stuff, quite frightening stuff. But he's ended up doing something really happy. He's, he's completely changed. That's his, that, that's his daughter procrastinating while doing her homework. Um, yeah. And then these are kind of. Um, Two variations of similar material, um, shorter version and longer version. Ah, text has come here. Okay. So I'll read this text then. Okay. Um, based in 1970s British public information films, the project explores the disruptive side of technology. The focus began analyzing how devices interrupt our concentration when reading. However, through experiments and research, the project's trajectory shifted to disruptions in urban environments. But you can hear all of this. Um, this is transport messages in various places around the world. Um, I can, the Chinese ones are very familiar. I haven't been to China, but there's Japanese and there's London ones as well. Um, you know, an announcement that, sorry, the train has been delayed or something like that, that kind of stuff. Um, so the city the ambient sounds are recorded while uh, traveling from Tokyo to London. The soundscape depicts the daily bombardments of white noise city dwellers endure daily in the form in the form of white noise, notifications, sirens, self-service machines, automated voices, visceral voices that breathe invisibly within the city. The animated visual narrative follows a series of chaotic, fragmented forms. Uh, the following video documents the entire process from start to finish, um, which began in 2015. Oh, that's just he's copied and pasted that. He's got a video on his web on his blog showing the whole process. Um, however, through the process, the project resolved as being, uh, to be honest, a personal attack on overuse of devices and a lack of engagement. Uh, viewpoints and research are a mixture of objective versus subjective, and there's a danger that I got too bogged down in the context and the theory aspect of the pro project. The art making and journey was the primary focus. During the art making, the most, the more deviations I was taking into rotoscoping process, the more I was giving myself a headache as to what would be finalised. Again, I was fretting too much about the end product. I suppose it's an, it's, it's that if that's a usual way of working, a leopard doesn't change its spots overnight. I was texturing sequence five that, um, that I thought that's it, it's finished. But no, I wanted to keep pushing the boat out. You could also argue that I had experimented with more mediums, such as painting or sculpture. The project would have been dramatically different. Far better or worse, does it matter? 
So just to explain that's a rotoscoping technique where you're filming and then drawing frame by frame over the over the the um, uh, the video uh, the video frame. I mean, it's still rotoscoping, but it's changed quite a lot since the last time I saw his work. So it was using this like well-known uh, film scenes that he'd appropriate. Uh, this to me is much more interesting than um, rotoscoping over the psycho scene or whatever. I think. He's using those uh, warnings in the 70s. Uh, the kind of public inflation film. So, Bruce, in first year, last year, he, he'd done quite a lot where he'd, he'd drawn over um, Psycho, the, shower, the famous shower scene in Psycho, he'd rotoscoped that. Um, but these are much more personal. Because yeah, these are. Like, his own life, yeah. Yeah. Or, or the sounds when he's traveling around. Or, and they're more abstract as well, which is fun. More interesting, they break down more, they, 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 they're visually more interesting than just a, a straight up rotoscope of a, of, of a scene from a movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have another comment about, but it's more about the sound, uh, and it's kind of the relation you develop with it on the exhibition. It, it's quite a small loop, so when you for instance, like invigilate the space, you kind of feel that the the sounds become the sound becomes quite important in relation to the space. So I was wondering if you get rid of the images and just focus the sound, maybe there is something to see there. I don't know if you're, I mean you were talking about how sound disrupts and inside of this exhibition I was feeling that right. from the sound. I don't think it's bad, it's just that that happened and I wasn't paying a lot of attention to the images, but I was hearing the sound over and over in a more or less quiet environment and I think it was powerful. So I, I know he has done a lot of drawing and images, but I, I think there is a thing to it, like the sound. And there's an interesting balance to be had between there's the, mute, the piano piece here, which his daughter is actually playing. So then these, which are recorded sounds, montized and layered in a similar way to the, to the visual effects. So you've got quite a contrast between the kind of very disruptive sound and then this, the kind of melodic sound of the piano, um, which isn't disruptive, but they're disrupted by its presence. So um, at one point, these were going to be just looped one after the other. Um, but it felt like that was kind of dishonest to the piece, that it really needed to have all three happening at the same time. They, they have very different lengths, so they loop in very different ways as well. But it felt more honest to actually have all three running at the same time, rather than one after the other. But, but I, I don't feel it as disruptive sound. If you had just that sound really loud, it'd be annoying, but it, 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 it just sounds like quite a nice bit of ambient music. The sound sort of fit the way you've done it, fitting quite well with the music. Mm -hmm. I, mean, so, I don't know what, what you think about that, but I, I don't hear it disrupting sound. I mean, it's, uh, I'm saying this because, I mean, especially one sound because from the you've been sitting from here from the, yeah, it's yeah. the sound from the train, and I take the train all, all the, every day, <laughs> so it's, it's kind, of, kind of related to my whole it's a, experience. It's a, it's a nightmare sound. Yeah, yeah, it's the kind of sound that you always hear, like if you try to read something or if you try, I don't know, to be quiet. You get that over and over. If you take the trip from home, I, I hear it at least ten times. So it's 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 a particular sound for me, but it's not about sound like the volume. It's more about the specific sound. <laughs> for me personally, I think it's interesting that having three screens works really well. I think when I did my show, twenty screens, you just can't look at it. Where three screens, you can manage to see them all together and all of the contacts. Yeah, maybe. That's an appropriate point to move on. As it pauses, let's go that way.